I'm Chloe Deggetts, um, and I'm with the Ohio Young Birders Group, and this is George Archibald, the founder of the International Crane Foundation. Um, so George, how did you get into birding? Well, ever since I was a child, <clears throat> I was fascinated by animals. And my first memories in life are of domestic ducks. Actually, I couldn't walk. I was in diapers, crawling around, and I followed a mother duck with her brood across the barnyard until my mother retrieved me, but I claimed that I imprinted on the duck and have been following birds ever since. So it's a gift I've had since childhood. I'm very lucky. So what is the International um, Crane Foundation that you founded 41 years ago? Uh, the International Crane Foundation is dedicated to the welfare of cranes worldwide. And cranes in many parts of the world are endangered. So what was your biggest motivating factor when you founded the International Crane Foundation? Well, when I was a university student, I did my doctoral research on cranes. And I was astounded that so little was known and that so many reported that cranes had been there, but they hadn't been seen for decades. So I thought, unless somebody does something in an organized international manner, because a lot of these birds migrate from one country to the other, they may soon be gone. So back in uh, 1973, cranes were like really endangered. Uh, how has your foundation helped the cranes as a whole How like bounce back? We have 11 species that are threatened, and then we have the ones that are still fairly numerous, but like all of the cranes of Africa are declining. So the ones that are critically endangered, like the whooping cranes in North America, since we started the Crane Foundation, have increased. We've helped establish nature reserves in many countries. For example, the Siberian crane, when we started, we thought there were only about three or four hundred. Now we have four thousand. Um, how many people do you have working um, to preserve the future of the cranes? We have 45 people on our staff, full-time employees. We have uh, colleagues, about 800 colleagues around the world that we keep in close touch with, and we have various regional working groups. Then the Crane Foundation is supported by 9,000 people, most of whom are from Wisconsin and Illinois. But we welcome Ohio memberships. Um, what is the reproduction rate for like cranes? Is there one species that has a particular, particularly slow reproduction rate? There's a lot of variation. The, the, the most rapid breeders are the crowned cranes from Africa. They could have up to four chicks. Then there are several of the most endangered cranes that will only raise one chick. They never raise two chicks in a year. Um, what is the biggest threat, or who or what is the biggest threat to cranes? The threats vary, but I should say habitat loss is the biggest threat. Turning the wetlands into farmland or in, into cities. If we can conserve this habitat, the cranes usually respond very well. The outright killing of cranes is another problem. In some countries, they are ruthlessly shot, especially in the Middle East area. And in Africa, the cranes are being captured and sold to private breeders and zoos so that they've declined in East Africa by about 80%. What technique did you use when you first started capturing um, cranes for captive breeding? When we started the captive breeding program in 1973, we concentrated on the rare cranes of Asia. <clears throat> and there were just scattered birds in captivity all over the world. So we gathered them up and brought all these old, many of them very old birds, to Baraboo, Wisconsin. And the technique we used to get fertile eggs was artificial insemination. And then in 1986, a wonderful researcher named Dr. Rob Horwich came to ICF 
in the National Clinic Foundation. And he developed a technique called costume rearing, whereby people dress up in crane costumes and raise the chicks, and then the chicks join the wild cranes. And then another group from an organization called Operation Migration has taken that one step further by putting costumes on pilots of these little airplanes, and the cranes followed them from Wisconsin to Florida. Have you ever been in danger while studying cranes in other countries? Well, I work in North Korea, which is a very scary place. I've worked in Iran a lot, and Afghanistan. I was worried about kidnapping in Afghanistan in recent years when I went there. I haven't been there for five years for that very reason. How can kids like me get involved in crane conservation? Well, sandhill cranes are colonizing Ohio. I hear there are several pairs nesting not so far from Columbus. And you can invite your parents or other friends to drive out there to look for them in the spring. You can become a member of the Crane Foundation and learn about what we're doing overseas and help raise money to support that. Um, thank you for coming here today. I really enjoyed speaking with you. We're all looking forward to your presentation at the Grange Insurance Audubon Center.